A question I see a lot is how do you read both clefs at the same time? Reading one line of music is okay, but how do you read two lines at the same time? And where should you look? Should you look at the treble or the bass or somewhere in the middle? In today's lesson, I'm going to answer all these questions and give you tips on how to read both clefs at the same time. And stay tuned until the end of the video because I'll be showing you exercises that you can do at home. Hi guys, this is Manu from Piano Sight Reading where I give sight reading tips to pianists. So how do you read both clefs at the same time? Well, first of all, let's just think for a minute what sight reading means. So sight reading obviously involves reading the music, but it also involves playing what you read. And that's where the difficulty comes in, because playing hands together can be quite challenging. Often the hands will do completely different things, so you have to learn to coordinate your movements. That's what I'll be talking about in this video as well. Today I'll be showing you tips that cover these two aspects of sight reading. So the reading side of it and the playing side of it. So tip number one is that you have to be able to read both clefs fluently. And what I mean by fluently is that you should be able to see a note and immediately recognize it. If it takes you two or three seconds to identify a note, then you're going to be quite slow when you have two lines of music to read. If you find yourself struggling with reading notes, whether it's in the treble or bass or both clefs, I suggest you first brush up on your note reading. Either use a note reading app like NoteQuest or get some music flashcards and every day for about five minutes or so just test your note reading and go through the notes that you have trouble remembering. Tip number two is train your eyes to look not only horizontally but vertically. What often happens with beginners is that they'll focus on only one line at a time. So they'll be playing and then they forget to play the notes in the other line. So what I suggest you do is find really easy music and learn to move your eyes across but also vertically. A good resource for this is the Sight Reading Exercises Opus 45 by Schaefer. You can find them on IMSLP. Let me show you one here that I've got. It's one of the very first ones in book one. And as you can see, it's very simple. There's only one note per line and it moves by step. You can take something as easy as this exercise and just train your eyes to move horizontally and vertically. And keep in mind that the music is written in such a way that the notes that I'm going to play together will be aligned vertically. If you're having trouble figuring out which notes fall together, what you can do is write vertical lines in your score. So for example, like this, so these fall together. And so on. My third tip is to focus your eyes on what changes. Say you have this piece of music here, you should see at a glance that the left hand stays the same for two bars, whereas the right hand changes. But within the right hand, you have the same rhythm repeating in the first bar. So what you need to do is quickly see what repeats and see what changes and focus your eyes on what changes the most. In the first two bars, you should mainly focus on the right hand. And then in bar three, you'll see that the left hand changes. So your eyes need to quickly go to the left hand to see the change, but then go back to the right hand, because again, that's where the most changes happen. Then in the fourth bar, again, you look back at the left hand and then back at the right hand. As you see, your eyes are never in one place at any one time. It should always look at what changes the most. Let's take one other example. Say you have this piece of music, which is chordal. What you would do here is scan and see what notes repeat and which notes change and how do they change. The notes with the same color are the ones repeating 
and then the black ones are the ones that move. So your eyes will mostly look at the black notes. The fourth tip to help you read is to use what's called chunking. So that's where you look at a group of notes instead of individual notes. By looking at groups of notes, say chords or intervals, you're speeding up your reading. And if you can do that in both treble and bass clef, you will read more fluently. For example, this excerpt here, you should be able to see at a glance that in the left hand you have root position chords. This means you don't have to look at all three notes of the chord, but just the bottom one. And you know that the other two notes will be part of a root position chord, which on the piano is usually played with the fifth, third and first finger. Or first, third, fifth finger, if it was in the right hand. The tips I just gave you now, those are for the reading side of things. Now let's look at the playing side of things. How do you play hands together? So I have two tips for you. Number one is train your hands to become independent of each other. Let's take an example to show you what I mean by hand independence. This is a little piece that I teach a lot of my beginner students and they all struggle with one thing, which is hand independence. This is what they'll do. They'll go like this. So what's happening is that the right hand is doing what the left hand is doing. The left hand has to lift for every bar, but actually the right hand should be linking the note across the bar like this what you need to do is this what i get them to do is to exaggerate the movements i get them to play really slowly and make really big movements it would look something like this this does is teach the hands the movements they need to do and if you exaggerate the movements then the brain will better understand what it needs to do so this is a little trick you can use for any hard passages like this and the second tip to play hands together is to work on the rhythm on its own, especially with pieces that are quite contrapuntal, meaning that there are two or more melody lines going all at once. It can be very tricky to coordinate the hands to play different rhythms. So what you can do is tap out the rhythm. The left hand would tap the left hand rhythm and the right hand the right hand rhythm. Let me show you a little excerpt. So those are my tips to learn how to read hands together. Now, if you're still watching, then good on you because I have a little treat for you. I've made hand independence exercises and two-handed rhythm exercises. You can download these for free on my website. You'll see a link in the description below. And the exercise also come with all the examples and tips I've given you in this video. Let me now show you a few examples of the exercises. This first one is just going up and down a five finger scale, but with different rhythms in both hands. exercises in C major but if you want the extra challenge you could transpose this in other keys so you could take G major and play the same thing okay and so on now let me show you an exercise where the articulation is different 
in both hands. One hand is meant to be played legato, while the other hand lifts at the end of each slur, and the hands take turn. So those are two out of the ten exercises for hand independence. Now let me show you examples of the two-handed rhythm exercises. For these exercises, tap the rhythm on your knees. To demonstrate, I'll tap here so that you can see my hands. I've made three levels of difficulty. Level one is where the hands alternate, so it's pretty simple. Let me show you the first one of these. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Now let me show you an example of level two. The hands are still alternating, but now there's some notes that are played together. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. Four. In level three, you have a combination of notes together and different rhythms. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. With all these exercises, take them as slow as you need to. The goal is not to go as fast as possible. The goal is to really train the hands to do two different things at the same time. You'll see that these exercises will help you play other pieces. I recommend that you download these exercises, print them out if you need to, and have a go at them. And I'd love to know how you go with them. So you can come back to this video and leave a comment. I hope you found this video useful. If you want to see more videos like this, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video. Happy sight reading! So try to get you <coughs> So try to get used to So try to get So try to get used to